was interviewed for headships in, in high schools for 12 years and never had, never was successful. And I had pro maybe three or four interviews a year in that process. You know, a lot of, a lot of rejection, which can become a giant and how you deal with those things is important. Well, in Mary's bag of stones, there's not just five stones. There are five stones that have got words written on them. And they're things that we can see from David and how he tackled Goliath that help us to know how to deal with giants and we can learn from. And the first of our stones, in fact, when I press this, you're going to see what all five words are, so I might as well. Well, you were. Um, Sue, could you just press it? So it's set up as a PowerPoint. So if you just press the arrow, it sh they should come up. I don't know why the... That's now both clickers have stopped this morning, so... We should be able to see... Are they coming up? All right. No, well, let's not worry. Oh, there we go. If you press it again, there are our five papers from earlier. So we've got five words that we're just going to explore very briefly. We've got courage and we've got confidence. We've got preparation. We've got trust and we've got victory. And we're just going to think about how those words can help us to face the giants that we come across in our lives. And the first of those words was courage. And uh, David wasn't afraid, was he, to, to fight the enemy. Um, he said to Saul, no one should be afraid of this Philistine. I will go and fight him. And uh, we need to be courageous to face the giants that are there. If we think, oh, I can't cope with this like the rest of the army did, like his brothers did, and they ran away rather than facing the giant, then they're never going to be victorious. The giant is always going to win. And, you know, if you are uh, feeling lonely, and you just keep running away and shutting your door, then that loneliness, that giant of loneliness, will never be beaten. And it might be that you need to open the door and, and come down to coffee morning on a Wednesday, or uh, in you know, my mum's situation, where mum lives in, a, in an apartment block, and it can be really difficult to meet people, even in that apartment block. But they can, there are things going on, and if they go down and do us on a Monday, they can get chatting to people. In school, it might be that you, you hide away, perhaps, in behind, uh, uh, sort of in the corner of the playground. But if you go and ask, can I play football or something like that, maybe you'll make friends. And loneliness can be dealt with. But that takes courage. That can be really difficult to do. But like David, if we are courageous and we step forward and we say, no, I'm not going to let this giant win, I can face this, then we're on the first step to dealing with the giant. Because if we don't, then we're just turning our back and running away from it. That's our first stone. The second stone is confidence. Confidence. And did you notice why David had the confidence to fight Goliath? He was a shepherd, and so actually a shepherd <coughs> might sound a nice little job in these days when we sort of see nice fluffy sheep like we did last week in Wales. You might think it's a nice tranquil job lying in the sunshine, looking after the sheep, but actually they needed danger money to be a shepherd in Jesus' day. It was a really dangerous job because they had to protect the sheep from wild animals, and we heard about lions and bears earlier. And so David, as a shepherd, knew that he had God's protection because when he spoke to Goliath in verse 37, he said these words, if I can just find it in mine. The Lord has saved me from lions and bears, 
he will save me from this Philistine. He didn't say he might save me, or he didn't say he uh, possibly could, or he can. He said he will save me. He had the confidence of knowing that God would save him. So when we're facing our giant, there's a couple of things we could do in terms of this confidence and where it comes from. It's a good thing, firstly, to look back and think about times where God has answered prayer or God has been with you in a certain way, where God's been with me, or I've had a Bible verse that's really come alive because I've been in a situation and I've brought it to mind. For example, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Or a verse that you have that's personal to you, that you know that when God's answered a prayer before, that was the verse that got you through it. It's good to look back because that reminds us, well, when God did it then, God can do it and will do it in the future. And then once we've sort of reminded ourselves of what God can do, we can look forward and remember what he's done before so that we can come at our giant, whatever it is, whether it's loneliness or we're frightened of something or whatever, We've done it before, he can do it again. And one thing that I really love, one of the verses that I really love is in Psalm, Psalm 25. If you've never read Psalm 25, it's a great one. But verse 1 and 2 say this, To you, O Lord, I offer my prayer. In you, my God, I trust. Save me from the shame of defeat. Don't let my enemies gloat over me. Defeat does not come to those who trust in you. Great words that we can bring to mind. So, Thank you, Mary. Our next word, our next pebble, is preparation. And the pebbles are that preparation. David didn't just go out into the middle of uh, the two lines of soldiers. He went to the stream and he armed himself with pebbles. And uh, they might seem a bit, well, you know, why pebbles? That's not anything very much. But with the sling that he had also got, those pebbles were what was going to win against Goliath. And so preparation is our third word. And uh, I just, it sort of struck me as we were sort of preparing for this. Uh, over in the corner, uh, you will uh, see some information about a place called Niger. And you'll see a newsletter about Judith from Judith Skelter and Judith came and spoke to us at one of our mission prayer meetings and told us all about being prepared uh, to go out uh, with uh, SIM to Niger to work in the school and she said but I don't know what's going to happen because this morning there was a coup and that very day there had been a coup in Niger and I've told you what she did. She's now out in Paris and she is preparing herself to go to Niger. Uh, Niger is a French colony or was a French colony and therefore French is the main language in that country. And so she's learning French and improving on her schoolgirl French so that she is ready to go out when the opportunity comes. I heard when the opportunity is going to come this week. Uh, unfortunately for Maisie, it's going to be before Maisie gets married because Maisie was hoping that Judith would be there and one of Judith's sisters is going to be uh, one of Maisie's bridesmaids. But it looks like Judith will be going out to Niger on the 22nd of December. Um, so that's really exciting that having sort of done what she felt was right to prepare herself for the mission field she is now the opportunity looks like it is going to be there and so we need to think about what we need to how we need to prepare ourselves verse uh, 40 uh, in uh, 1 Samuel 17 says this let's read it directly uh, he took his shepherd's stick and then picked up five smooth stones uh, from the stream and put them in his bag with his catapult ready. He went out to meet Goliath. We need to prepare ourselves for what uh, God wants us to do to fight the giants that are there in our lives. And it might be that we need to learn 
and do some learning. It might be that we need to do some reading. It might be that we need to go and be educated in a new language in Judith's case. It might be there are all sorts of things that we might have to do to get ready to prepare ourselves for the challenges that we face. It's worth thinking, isn't it? What is it? What can God do? I, uh, when I sort of uh, took on uh, being paid by church, one of the things I thought is, yeah, I've just got to find out more. I've got to improve my understanding. And uh, I found uh, there's a, one of the Bible colleges, theology colleges, does like a pop-up theology course on a Monday night. And I felt God saying, you know, the other thing the church needs, we need to think about prayer. And the first module that this pop-up theology course did, once I'd sort of signed, if I'd signed up, was prayer. And it was like, actually, God is preparing me for this role. And, but I had to do something about it. I couldn't just say, oh, yeah, that's a really good idea. I actually had to get on and sign up and set aside Monday nights to be prepared. Currently, we're doing faith. Spring is about mission. Just a warning for you, hey? Um, but we need to be prepared uh, to face the giants that we come across. There it is. And four is trust. Did you notice when David came at Goliath what he said? He didn't say, I'm David and I'm not afraid of you. He didn't say that. He said in Samuel 17, 45, he said, you're coming against me with sword, spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the Israelite armies, which you have defied. So when we face our giants, we need to recognise that we're coming at them in God's abilities and not our own. It's all about God and not about us. We can't do it in our own strength. And yesterday, Sue did something. So if it's all right, Sue, we're going to do it again. Ada, can I borrow you? Can I borrow Ada? If, if you could come up to the front, Ada, Dave's going to put something on you, and it'll be very, very strange, but it'll be a really good thing. Face, face everyone. You face your face everyone. Face everyone. Face everyone like that. Right. You need to look big and strong, okay? Do so really bring your strong. arms up like this. Bring your arms up like this, okay? Right. You're big and strong, yeah? So this is what Saul did. Saul put his armour on to David. So I'm going to put my big, big coat. There we go. Put your arm in there. the sleeve. There we are. And uh, that one in there. In there. And we'll we'll do it up. We'll do it up. Uh, it, it, it doesn't look like. Um... Hang on, I need to do it up yet because it's even more important to be done up because it's armour, Mary. That doesn't look quite like it fits, does it? Like, do you think you'd be able to do any fighting with that? I can't even see where your arms are. Where, where are your arms? Um, what do you think, boys? Do you think that would be any good for Adam? Yeah. Is that any good for you? I don't is, think no, so. No, I don't think it is, no. is it? I th I think a photo do opportunity. Hang on, Dave. Oh, a photo right. opportunity will watch a photo. <laughs> So in verse 38, Saul gives David his own armour, but it was too big, it was too heavy, and it didn't fit. Just like Dane's jacket doesn't fit Adder. It would be ridiculous to send Adder out dressed like that. She wouldn't be able to do a thing, she wouldn't be able to walk. And so David was struggling because it just didn't fit him. And actually, it just reminded me, when Sue did that yesterday, then we were preparing... It just reminded me that actually, when we, the giants we have in our lives, we might have a similar giant to somebody else, but God will give us our way of coping with that, uh, with that giant, a way that fits us. And what God does with somebody else and how they deal with it might not necessarily be the way that God's going to deal with it with us or wants us to deal with it. That doesn't mean that we can't look at other people and take them and follow examples, because that's also a good thing to do when people you know, give us a really good model of something to do. We can take from that, but equally, God won't necessarily do with us what he's doing with other people. And he will give us ways to fight our own giants in our own lives, in our own way, ways that he equips us to do. And it might mean different things for different people. 
I would much rather, if there's something going on, and there's a, a, say a disagreement or something's happening, I would much rather be the one that keeps quiet and just sort of like pray for peace quietly and keep quiet. Whereas, so I've actually found just recently, I've had to find my voice and do a bit of fighting sort of with my voice. Whereas for other people who perhaps like to be in control, sometimes God might ask you just to step back. And there's a verse in the Bible that sort of says, be still and see what God will do for you on your behalf. God does different things with different people accordingly. And whichever way it is, it's got to be God's way. And we've got to trust him that God will help us fight whatever giant it is, but he'll do it his way with us. And the final word. The final word is, of course, victory. That was the final pebble that we had. And the, um, the important thing, the whole thing, about this story is not that David was fighting Goliath, but that actually it was God's battle. And we, God uses us and he puts us in situations and we face these giants, but actually victory comes because it's God's battle and not ours. If we, if we were dependent on ourselves, we're not going to be successful. The, these two people in, in these books, they're, they're great people. And, and I'm really, you know, when you've taught somebody and you see them doing something really good, that's great. But in the end, both of these people are facing the giants that they come across, the giants that we all come across in their own strength. Whereas David... And us, because we are trusting in the Lord Jesus, can face these battles knowing that it's God's battle. It's not our battle. And actually, we can mess up and we can get it wrong, as so often I do. And yet we know that we can be forgiven and that we will still see victory, the final victory where we stand in God's presence. Not because it's our battle, but because actually it's God's battle. And that's what David uh, understood uh, in this story. Mary. We're going to pray, but before we do, we're going to do it in a slightly different way. Can I ask Paul, would you give everybody a stand? Is that right? So you're going to take a stone, You, um, what we're going to do, when you get your stone, have a think about what um, you might be facing in your life. If there's, a, It might be that you don't think you've got a particular giant in your life at the moment, that's fine. But if, think about a situation that you might be in or uh, a person that you're facing that you're finding difficult. Uh, your battle, if you like, your, your giant. And as you hold the stone, just think about that for a moment. And then Dave's also giving out some Sharpie pens, so don't get them on your clothes, just use it for the stone. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just give that little, <laughs> little handy hint out there. As we have seen in the story today, I'm reminded of the fact that we can trust God, that God is with us and whatever battles we're facing, that he is with us and he is bigger than whatever that giant is that we're facing. So as you're thinking about your giant, have a think about what God is like. And write a word on your stone that describes God. So if, for example, just the, the fact that we've been thinking about the fact we can trust God this morning, you might want to write trustworthy. You might want to write almighty. We've heard that word this morning. You might want to write the word powerful, but something that describes God that you can then cling hold of of your stone as you think about the thing that you're facing. It's the characteristic of God that you, you most need at the moment, if you like, the, the characteristic of God that you need to intervene with this battle that you're facing or the giant that you might have. So it's a, a thinking about your situation and a, a writing a word that describes God on your stone. I'll just give you a couple of minutes.
So the stone, as you hold the stone, you're thinking about maybe a situation in your life or a, a giant in terms of what we've been thinking today. But then on the stone, you're writing a word that um, describes God that will help you in that situation. So it's a word, a characteristic of God, a word that describes God. Does anybody want to share a word that they've written on their stone? Go on, Michael. Powerful, great word. Norma. All knowing. All knowing. Love it. You had the same as Norma. Faithful. Faithful. He's got another one. Yeah. Strong and mighty. And what's your word? Faithful to his promises. Fantastic. Faithful. Brilliant. Any more for Benyam? Steadfast love. I like that. Steadfast love. Great word. So you can put this on your mantelpiece or by your bed, in your pocket. And next time you're facing that situation, you can have your stone and remind us that, that God is those things that you've written and that your battle belongs to him. David's going to come and pray. He is in a minute. Just talk for a second. He's looking for something in particular. Any more words? Somebody help me out with another word that they've written. Oh, my, how many words have you written on your stone, Michael? He wrote three words. That's fantastic. What's your other one? Four words. Give me a fourth word then. Have, have you given them all? He's given you them all. Gracious. Gracious. Yeah. Paul, what word have you written? Yeah. Caring. Yeah. Unchanging. Yeah. And that has good. It's a good girl. Good. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Brilliant. Does that help you out, Dave? Yeah, have, you found, what, have you found your word? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm just going to read from Lamentations um, 3. And uh, in the good news, it goes like this. It might sound a bit differently to how you used to it. This is how it goes in the good news. The thought of my pain, my homelessness, is bitter poison. I think of it constantly and my spirit is depressed. It's facing a giant there. Yet hope returns when I remember this one thing. The Lord's unfailing love and mercy still continue. Fresh as the morning, as sure as the sunrise, the Lord is all I have, and so I put my hope in him. The Lord is good to everyone who trusts in him. So it is best for us to wait in patience, to wait for him to save us, and it is best to learn this patience in our youth. Heavenly Father, we... Thank you for this example from David. We thank you for uh, these words for us to think about, to face the giants that we come across with courage and confidence, to be prepared to trust in you and to remember that the battles we face are not ours but yours and that we will be victorious with you. Lord, your love is unfailing. And the giants may feel as though they are oppressing us and uh, just overall, and yet fresh every morning is your mercy and your love. You don't change. And Father, I thank you that uh, whatever we are facing, big or small, that Lord, you will be with us and that we can trust you and put our hope in you. In Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing to close Mary Needs Her Glasses and we're going to sing uh, My God is All I Need. Now you'll remember that there's in the middle of it, there's some actions because it brings in a children, one of the children's songs as well. So uh, if you're up for it, there'll be some actions. I'll stand at the front and try and get them right. Though no, I'll probably get them wrong, but you know. We can't get the words on the screen, so I'll go to the back and see if I can get words on the screen. I'll just read the words in the first verse. Dark darkness is valley, the light at my feet. But whatever may face me, it's really well what we're thinking about this morning. But whatever may face me, my God 